In part one of the video, we looked at an example of a place where a buffer would be useful, that is in the aspirin, and trying to help prevent stomach upset from caused by aspirin. So let's look in part two at how this exactly works chemically. So here's an example of a buffer. This is buffer that's used in fish aquariums to buffer the pH. And let's see what that means. Uh, a buffered solution is one that resists a change in pH. So if you have a solution and you buffer it, you add something to it, and that something will help prevent changes or to limit changes in the pH. So you can add an acid to it, but the pH won't drop as much as you would expect it to. Likewise, you could add a base, but the pH won't go up as much as you would expect it to. And that's what the buffer does. It limits the change in pH of a solution. So what you do is you make a solution that contains a weak acid and its conjugate base. Remember, the weak acid is one that doesn't ionize very much. And its conjugate base will be relatively strong because of that. So here's an example. Here is an acid and a base. The acid loses a hydrogen and becomes the conjugate base. The base gains a hydrogen and becomes the conjugate acid. So this is the conjugate base right here. So to make the buffered solution, we would have the weak acid, which is this, and then we would add its conjugate base. So NaHCO3 contains the same ion, see that, the HCO3, and so if we were to add NaHCO3, we'd, we would get extra conjugate base. So then the solution would contain these three ions, the acid, then this neutral sodium ion that's not going to do anything, and then we would have this conjugate base. So what's going to happen then is we have an acid and a base in there, so as, as we add acid, the base will use that up. As we add base, the acid will use that up, and we'll get a relatively smaller change. All right, so here we go talking about that. We've got this solution containing acid and then a sodium ion and then the hydrogen carbonate ion or bicarbonate ion as it's called. So if we add HCl, it will ionize and form hydrogen ions, but and, and normally that would lower the pH, but in this case they tend to react with the HCO3 ions and get used up. So instead of raising the amount of hydrogen ion concentration so much, it's limited because some of it gets used up in reacting with this thing. All right, and so H plus HCO3 produces more of the original acid, and you may think, well, yeah, you added acid, but this is not what makes it acidic. It's the hydrogen that makes it acidic. And so it removes the hydrogens from the solution. It keeps the pH from dropping. Or if we added a base like NaOH, let's look at that, that would form these hydroxide ions. Those would react with the original acid, forming water and the conjugate base. So the OHs get used up doing that. And that removes the OHs from the solution. And the pH stays down instead of going up quite so much. All right. And as it says, this is the most important slide because I'm going to summarize all of it and tell you exactly what you need to do when you do a buffered problem. You make a buffer by putting together a weak acid and a salt that has the same anion in it. A weak acid you should recognize because it's not on the strong list that we've had earlier. And then you just look at what the back end of it is, what the right side of it is, and make sure you have the same anion. So for example, this is acetic acid. This is sodium acetate. See, they both have C2H3O2 in them. Here's carbonic acid and sodium hydrogen carbonate. They both have HCO3, HCO3 in them. All right, so here are some places where buffers are also used with, in addition to the aspirin that I showed you earlier. Your blood is buffered so that if you consume acidic or basic foods, your blood chemistry won't change dramatically. That could be, that could be deadly to you if your pH of your blood changed a lot. Aquarium water, I showed you earlier, aquarium buffer to add in there, these are neon tetras. I told you a story about neon tetras and how um, they're sensitive to the pH of water before. And aspirin is the example that I already gave you. And rain and rocks, so if acid rain falls, it will react with the carbonates in the rocks and so that will get rid of some of the acidity of the rain. So as rain percolates down through the ground, it will react with the rocks and it will change the acidity of the rain. It will kind of buffer that so that the rain won't be quite as acidic as it gets down through the, uh, 
through the soil and into the rocks. All right, so there are how buffers work. 